Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. If you have a chance, hit the subscribe button down below and hit the like button to help other people find the curriculums and the reviews that we put out every, uh, every week and help you get those into your inbox as well. Now you're wondering what I'm, I got my arms on. This is the Right Start Math RS2 Math Manipulative Set. And this covers from A all the way up to level, I think, G. Cover all the Bright Start Math curriculums. You get the whole manipulative set all in one. It's about 220-ish dollars. And we're gonna cover every single piece that's in this curriculum. I'll show you everything that we have, we have from the balance thing to, um, to the uh, Cotter Abacus to tally sticks and everything. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look down below. If you're thinking about buying this, this set, if you're already thinking about doing the Right Start Math curriculum and you're kind of on the fence on whether or not to buy the manipulative set, I hope this video helps you make a good decision. So let's go ahead and hop into the review. So you're probably wondering, as we start off, why all the tubs, Matt? Well, one thing that I have learned in all my years of homeschooling <laughs> is when you get a big box of stuff, make sure you have a place to put that stuff, especially for manipulative sets like this one that are gonna span years. Getting a really good organizer or get an organization or just put it in a place that you know is home so that when you pull things out, you gotta put them back. I have um, had essentially two systems here. I'll show you the first system here, which is a basically a big plastic tub, and these are meant for hard drives, and I'll go ahead and put a, uh, a link down below, but this is a great way for me to put all the small, little itty-bitty pieces that are included in this set into little containers that are kind of stored away. If you have a nice little label maker, you can you know, put it on, you can imagine putting it on the outside. I think my wife is gonna do that as the next thing. Um, don't be me. <laughs> don't be me and make a terrible mistake of not organizing your math manipulatives um, and letting them just spread around because then you end up having to spend so much time finding them and I'm a big stickler for having to find things um, and, and basically the wasted time of having to find things. I love having things organized. That took me about a, two years of homeschooling to finally realize that. I have another tub. This is for things that are too big to go into these little tubs. Um, and I go ahead and have all these in here and the blocks and everything. And don't worry, we're gonna go through each and every one of these things, but I just wanna show you the organization that we have. So a nice little kind of sterilite tub um, works fine. And then this really nice um, hard drive uh, saving kit uh, little box here um, is a real lifesaver for me. I'm kind of organizing these things now that I'm going um, through this now with two children, I'm gonna to have to be going and, and finding different things at different times. Um, it's nice to have an organization and a method to your madness. So let's go ahead and talk about no numero uno, um, the Cotter Abacus. This is the first manipulative you have in the set. And if you're questionable about whether or not to buy the manipulative set, I believe you can buy the Cotter Abacus separately. And I think I referenced that in some of the earlier reviews. If you, if you're, if you have to buy one manipulative for the Right Start Math curriculum, the Cotter Abacus is your, is your one manipulative. It's called out so much in the curriculum that it would feel almost strange not to have it um, because you're, you're constantly looking for these fives and these tens. And a lot of the activities call that out and it would feel very strange not having this abacus. So I would really encourage you to buy the abacus. This has now survived four or five, five levels now for one kid and it's already starting to get beaten up by the second kid and it is holding on strong so real nice uh, build manufacturing so i would really recommend you buying essentially the cotter abacus um, this is the first thing that i would recommend you buying a separate piece of content that they produce is, that comes with the um, the book as well um, is the math card games now throughout the various lessons um, level a and so on b c d um, they call out math card games um, a lot of games and we are a big game schooling family um, and this is the book that calls those things out so they will reference in your um, the thing the materials that you need they'll say hey um, go ahead and, and play this game and then they'll call it out in the thing and they'll have it you know numbered and they have it as n they have clocks here and they're, they're p19 they'll tell you what game you're trying to do and you'll have to go out and find that game they give you the rules they, what it, what it's called the objective the background the cards that you need to be able to do that. If you want to take advantage of the games that are called out in the lessons, um, this is the, the book for that. 
If you don't have this book and you don't buy the math manipulative set, you can feel free to just go ahead and ignore those sections in the, in the lessons. And you go ahead and just, you know, insert your own games. You know, if it's a counting game, if it's a card game, whatever it might be, if you have a good game at home um, that can teach numbers and whatever concept they're doing, go ahead and do that. Sometimes just a deck of cards is, 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 is as easy as you, as you need, but they provide you this math cards game. Um, and I think at the end they have a little bit of a, a DVD here as well. And then there's some appendices at the end um, that you may need or that are called out as well um, there in the end as well. So. The math card game book is the second thing that you end up getting with this curriculum. All right, so the second thing you, the third thing you end up getting here, the next thing is the place value cards. Um, you will use these extensively in the first, um, I think the first two, maybe three, four, I think levels up to level D, I think you use these uh, extensively, especially when you're talking about addition and place value and, and math. And you can see here we have uh, the thousands, we have the hundreds, we have the tens, and then we have the ones. And very often you are doing, I'll maybe pull one out here, um, you get the tens place and then you are building numbers. So they use the, um, the terms of 110 um, until they actually have you use the actual number. So if it's 310, it's not 30, we say 310. Um, and I think it's almost until le level three where we start saying 30. Um, but they really want you to think about 110, 210, 310, 410, 510. I actually like using the terminology. I wish that's what we used because it just makes a lot more sense. Um, but basically you're going to be building numbers. So you can imagine taking 110, 8. So you'll have 10 you know, little beads and then you'll have 8 here. It really marries well with the abacus. Um, if you're doing the exact same thing here, if you can think about it, I need, I need 110, 110, and then I need 8. I can go ahead and get eight there. And so you're thinking about terms of one, 10, eight, they very often will do activities where you are building those numbers and understanding the place value of the tens and the ones. Next thing that they talk about in the kit are the um, uh, abacus tiles. These are the number cards. This is used some in, in another location, but um, these abacus tiles are really interesting. You're gonna use these for many, many, many lessons. And they're gonna help um, elucidate various numbers. So these will represent 100. So we have 100 and then we have 10 hundreds. Um, we have a thousand. So this is a thousand cube. And very often we'll be, you know, counting up numbers, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, um, and so on and so forth. And we have the hundreds here as well, uh, represented by the abacus tiles. And so you'll end up using a lot of these, especially when you get into the higher place values. Um, typically not in the level, uh, level, I think the level A does not get this high. You might touch in hundreds here, but that's about the limit. I think level B, you get a lot more into that as well as level C. Um, but for the short term, um, this is not something you would use in the early years ones, but definitely in the later years. Next thing is we have a folding meter stick. Um, and this is for a lot of the measurement activities that you'll end up doing. Um, as part of the curriculum. And this is basically just uh, essentially a, uh, a ruler that extends and opens up and, and folds out. And we go ahead and use that as a uh, meter stick. So you can see here, we're uh, very helpful for counting. So you can definitely see the dual use in the counting line, um, but also for uh, measuring as well. So it's just a very simple collapsible meter stick that you'll end up using um, in those lessons. All right, now let's talk about the geo board. Um, so included in the curriculum is a geo board and this is basically a square peg board and they have these little pegs that you put rubber bands around. They supply you with rubber bands, but those go missing very fast. So I like to just have a nice stock of rubber bands all over the place. And then on the reverse side, we have the circular um, a geo board as well as the pegs on the corner so we can make various shapes. Most of the geometric shapes that you'll end up doing like triangles or quadrilaterals, rhombuses, and stuff like that you'll be making are on this board. And if you're doing a lot more triangle work is be on the backside here on the geo board. So um, widely used to help teach the geometry, especially in the earlier years. Um, a lot of the ideas of like mirroring things or, or reflective, um, uh, visual, visualizing things that are, are mirrored or, ref or reflective, um, they use the geo board in order to teach those concepts. All right, let's talk a little bit about the colored tiles. These are really fun, um, great to have. You can obviously find colored tiles wherever you want, um, but these are basically one inch square 
uh, tiles. What's really cool about um, Right Start Math is they really were really smart about their manipulatives. They, choo they chose manipulatives that are going to be used to help also measure things. So you'll say that's a, that's a two inch tall uh, thing. They made their manipulatives, you know, those standard sizes. There's centimeter cubes as well that we'll show in a few minutes um, that are both used for counting and also used for measurement. So again, um, this is great for sorting um, when, you're, when you're doing um, color recognition, when you're doing counting, uh, visual counting, you're gonna use a lot of uh, simple one inch tiles and they supply you a bunch of these. These will get lost really fast. So I would recommend you putting these into a container. I have another, I have like 20% of these cubes in another kit downstairs, which is like my go math kit um, in, a, in case I need those. So I, I kind of split these up, but um, they cover all the different colors. Um, really helpful, really useful. Next thing that's provided is a simple blue Casio calculator. Um, just pops right open, solar powered, um, and you can, you know, basic do math. Um, they do have some lessons that um, where the child is learning how to use the, the calculator. They use the various um, subjects. Really helpful to have. Um, nice little side uh, calculator that you can use anytime. Next thing we have are tanagrams. So these are basically squares, rectangles, and triangles. Um, they come in various shapes and sizes, and very often you are building um, different shapes. Um, obviously, a little equal uh, rhombus there, I mean a uh, quadrilateral there. We have different colors and you're making different shapes. And so just talking about geometric concepts, they have a whole set of tanagrams. Again, very much <laughs> recommend you putting these into a little storage container. Um, super helpful to have, have those captured somewhere. These can disappear very fast. And then you're left with, well, I don't have the tanagrams <laughs> anymore. So definitely make sure you find a little container for those. We'll do a twofer here. We'll talk about the uh, little cubes. So these are the centimeter cubes that you have. The, a lot of counting activities, little cubes to be able to use for that, but also really helpful to use for measurements. So if you're trying to measure in some of the measurement um, system uh, sections and lessons, you'll be able to use those to measure. Also, you have your um, little cards here for your base 10 picture cards. Um, they have them for one little cube, right? And then they have um, a set for 10, here it is, the 10. So 10 cubes. And again, the same image here mimics the cotter abacus in the way they divide up on the fives and the 10. So again, another important reason why to have the cotter abacus at a bare, bare minimum is a lot of these cards and cubes and, and concepts are all taught referencing that. Furthermore, we have the 100 here. Um, and you can see exact same thing. The cotter abacus is reflected in that imagery and they have a bunch here. So very often when we're doing place value, we'll be saying, all right, how many tens do we have? Well, we have three tens and then we'll take a couple ones. We'll say, okay, we have three ones. So we'll have three, 10, one, and then they'll ask you to mimic that sometimes on the cotter abacus. So three, 10, I'm sorry, three, 10, three, and then we'll go ahead and do that. And so we'll, we'll be able to mimic one, two, three tens and then three individual ones, and we see those reflected there. Um, so place value, base cards, um, base 10 picture cards are super important, super helpful. Next, we have the infamous tally sticks, very uh, simple tongue depressors um, that we have here, and when we are making our numbers, a very important thing that we, concept that they drive home very on the earlier years is understanding how to make five. So we have five, five, again, Cotter abacus, I know I've talked about it ad nauseum, but five. Um, really elucidating that, that idea of fives and the five and two fives make ten. So five and one, so we can count from here and say, oh, that's five, six, and we can count real fast. Being able to count not from one all the way up to six, but to count from a reference number of five to six really helps you think in that kind of that numbered dimensionality. Um, but these are the tally sticks. Obviously, you can buy tally sticks. Um, at the grocery store or you know, popsicle sticks, you get them thousands of them if you need, um, but these are the tally sticks that they use. Um, really helpful and, and super simple. Next thing we have here is the geared clock. So throughout the various lessons uh, levels, you are gonna be talking about time. Time is gonna come back over and over and over again, just constantly driving home the idea of doing time and it's an analog clock, but also talking about uh, the digital um, elements as well. And we have the clock card deck here as, um, as well. And so here it is. 
so they're talking about the times here. We have 20, so we can make, you know, uh, 11.05 right there. And then you can go ahead and, and you know, go ahead and uh, go all the way around. So we can go all the way to 11.05, right? And so we're gonna use the geared clock um, and be able to use that as you go around. So just a very simple clock. I know we're always thinking about um, doing various um, ways of teaching time. They include this clock as well and super helpful. So we have the, the times, the minutes, the, the, the hours um, in these little cards, very similar to um, the number cards or some, some of the uh, finger cards or the tally stick cards. You have these as well for clocks. Uh, one thing that I don't have here is they call out six decks of cards and that's to go with the card games. There's um, just like decks of cards that you can use. Um, those have been lost to the wind. So just get some bicycle uh, decks, uh, simple bicycle cards uh, to do that. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about our um, very simple fraction charts. So part of, of understanding um, numbers is understanding their parts. Um, talking about the fraction chart. So there's two different types of fraction charts. There's the basically the reference chart. This is very big. I end up finding a smaller one that I print off that I put in the, uh, the, the book just as a reference. But if you don't want to have this bigger one lying around. And then they also have all the individual fraction pieces. So if you're building fractions, um, you can do that as well. So if we have, you know, three, three fifths, and we go ahead and count that up. So that's one, two, three, three fifths is the total. If we add one more, that's four fifths, and I, I'm not gonna be lucky enough to find the other fifth here um, that is out there. So you have all the individual pieces as well. Um, very helpful when you're teaching fractions. Fractions are a really difficult idea of you know, breaking up the whole number one, but these beautiful fraction charts are great references for the learner to understand that, oh, I can take the one and I can break it up in all these little itty bitty pieces and it still adds up to the same number. Next thing we have here is the drawing set. Um, a lot of lessons uh, and, and various lessons will call this out. And remember, when I'm talking about these things, they are called out in not just one level, but in multiple levels of the math curriculum. So um, very often we're talking about drawing straight lines. Um, we may be making certain types of shapes and they have various uh, tools for the learner to do that, various triangles, um, you know, right triangles. We have, I, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, equilateral triangles it looks like there, maybe not isosceles triangle or whatever. Um, being able to draw angles is super important. Um, just a ton of little reference things and also obviously uh, the instructions on the reference tools and how to use them, um, especially if you're doing simple geometry and you wanna be able to draw those shapes and those lines, you'd be able to go ahead and how to put that together. Uh, a lot of the geometry, a lot of drawing uh, is used to elucidate those those ideas of shape, but also dimensionality. Um, you do measurements with this, being able to draw uh, straight lines or curved lines, um, angles, whatever it might be. They give you a lot of tools to do that. Next thing they provide you is a simple straightforward ruler. They call it the four in one ruler. Simply it's a, the numbers are written in both directions. So if you want to orient it in different ways, so that's inches. Um, I, as, as we like to say, uh, units that have put people on the moon. And then we have every, what everybody else uses, which is metric on the backside as well. So we have um, centimeters. There's a, a very, very fine print, a little bit too difficult for my eyes. Uh, we have weights and capacity, area and length, and they have a lot of conversions for you there. That might be useful later in the upper levels when you're maybe doing some conversions. Money, 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 money. So I know you don't wanna dig through the giant coin jar and get your hands all nasty and dirty with all the money that's in that, that jar. Um, they do provide you money um, with the, basically this is US money. So I believe they have a conversion option for different countries around the world. So you can click on that and buy a different version. And uh, I think they have the money that's separated there. Um, but if they don't, uh, this U.S. money, so we have 25, we have a, I think it's a half dollar, am I right? Yes, half dollar, I believe. Half dollar, yes, 50 cents, and we have pennies, we have dimes, and they have nickels as well. Um, all plastic, so it's, it's a little bit cleaner, <laughs> a little bit cleaner. Um, they have reference money card decks um, for various things that you might be doing, um, writing numbers, counting things up, 25. So this is just value cards so you can play different games. Uh, with and that is provided in the kit as well. Again, really, really recommend you having 
um, a container for this so you don't lose this money, um, especially if you are, you know, playing games with it or if you're doing some fun activities with money, you know, playing little store and whatnot if you want to do store. I found that to be very helpful doing money is just actually just playing store with the kids. Um, you don't want to lose the money, so definitely have a place to put that. All right, next thing we have here is the uh, the geometry reflector. Um, so very often you're having shapes and you want to draw the mirrored image of that. This is part of the geometry lessons. They provide you a little kind of mirror that allows you to be able to copy those things. If you look on a certain angle, it forms a mirror that the, the uh, learner can go ahead and then copy that, that action that they see into the mirror. So a little geo reflector mirror is also provided for you. This manipulative is a little bit better shown directly at the camera. Um, this is your balance bar. Um, they have these little weights here to kind of find your equilibrium. Sometimes it's not perfect. I lost the pin and I actually have a little nail that I have put through here and bent up in order to keep the, uh, the swing uh, arm uh, on, the, on the pedestal here. Um, and they provide you with a bunch of these blue hanging uh, uh, 10 gram little, little things. So you can do simple math. You can say, okay, what is uh, three? Uh, let's see if I can do this backwards. Three plus two, and then your learner will go, okay, one, two, three, four, five. And when you put that on there, whoa, magic. It goes ahead and finds equilibrium. What's really cool about this is you can do multiplication. You think, oh, it only goes up to 10. Mm -mm -mm. If you wanna do 210, let's say 2101. Let's see if I can do this in real time. 2101, that should be the same as uh, 3 7 right? If we remember our multiplication tables. Let's see if I can do this backwards. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, see if I got the right answer. And magically, you can do multiplication as well. Um, super, super helpful, super powerful. Now, you can only get about four or five on, on each one of the pegs, so you can't go too high, but when you're teaching those early concepts, really, really helpful. You can also think about you know division, so 21, how many sevens? Well, there's three of them. Um, so you can kind of do the reverse as well. Really helpful, really helpful. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have lost these, <laughs> maybe three or four times, so these are the third incantation of discovery on these guys. Um, this thing gets a lot of use, especially in the early years. Um, and it also gets a lot of use because it's fun. Um, my learners love playing with this. You'll end up finding your learners just kind of just putting pegs on and just kind of going through discovery mode. Really cool tool. Um, highly recommend you getting one of these, um, for, especially for the early like le levels like A, B, and C. Um, you'll use this uh, pretty extensively. All right, we're back down here uh, from the top down doing the geometry panels. And look at there. There's the mythical bag of rubber bands for the, for the geo board. We'll go ahead and put those over there. Um, these are the geometry panels. So what they are is they're basically shapes that can be bent and formed into various uh, kind of like press fit into place and you can form uh, various shapes. This is part of the geometry uh, lessons that will appear throughout the levels. Um, really cool, kind of optional for me. I find this to be just more of like an arts and crafts level thing. Um, but when you're really thinking about 3D objects, and those 3D objects being built from two-dimensional objects. This is a great way to kind of showcase uh, that, and they have them all the way up to, yeah, it looks like hexagon there, and pentagons, and, and squares, and triangles as well, and then all the various shapes you can make uh, through them, and they show you how to actually do that and, and assemble them, and then go ahead and fold them all together so you can do some really fun and wild different shapes. Why would you do volume when you can have nice little blocks? They provide you these wonderful wooden blocks. So if you're doing cylinders, you've got spheres, uh, thinner cylinders, you have some type of py uh, square pyramids, round conical pyramids, um, hexagonal uh, cylinders, um, various shapes. They provide half circle, half dome there, and you can stack them together. They're all kind of built uh, to be specific sizes, um, triangles, um, various shapes that you'll use to kind of showcase geometry, solids. Um, if you're later years, you're doing area and then length and calculating volume, uh, you'll go ahead and use these as well. So they provide you a bunch of wooden blocks. They're really nice. They're not plastic. They're actually wood and they have a real nice, they have a real nice feel to them. They're not like rough. They're real nice and smooth. So they um, provided some wonderful tools here for you to be able to talk about those geometry concepts. 
Next thing they have here is the yellow is the sun CD, which is nicely paired with the yellow is the sun book. Uh, helpful for those first few levels when you're playing the music and you want to sing along with the songs, they provide you with the CD there. Um, I don't know if they have a digital download now, but um, you do get, be given a CD. I know a lot of computers don't have CDs now, and I will have to check and see if they have a digital download, but um, that would probably be where they're going. They should probably go with that and get rid of the CDs um, when you're doing the Yellow is the Sun book. Last thing were those deck of cards that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, having some bicycle cards is super helpful with the games, but also they supply you with a basic card decks to do various different things. They um, have numbers on them, um, they have multiplication card decks, fraction card decks, percentage card decks, just your simple number card decks. Very often on the back there are multiplication tables. Bunch of cards, again, rubber bands, put them in a container um, and pull them out when you need them. Don't let these sit out. Um, this is, the last thing you wanna do is lose one or two of these cards and then the whole deck um, might be lost. And so definitely keep good, good care of these cards um, as, uh, uh, as you use them. You made it through. <laughs> and we went ahead and talked about the Right Start RS2 math set. Now this is the complete math manipulative set that you will use for all the levels of Right Start math. About $220, it's a big ask, but if you think about going through all those levels, eight of them or so, um, spending 20 or $30 a year, essentially you know, amortized over those years, um, manipulatives can save you a lot of time and effort and frustration having to go to the stores and source all those little um, those little manipulatives that you may need for each and every lesson. Um, some of the, the manipulatives are more common, you know, it's like an abacus, like a cotter abacus. Um, but if you're looking for geometric shapes that are being called out or um, geometric panels and things like that, might be a little bit more challenging for you to find. If you're just starting Right Start Math, I think those that first year of Right Start Math level A you can probably get away with just getting the abacus and then building your own manipulatives. But if you find that your learners like the Right Start Math curriculum and you're gonna continue using those, or you have multiple students going through, I would recommend getting the actual uh, math set. It's $220 on top of the regular um, math set, which is typically $100, $120 if you're getting the digital downloads. Um, it can add up. So it's definitely a little bit more of a pricier math curriculum. Um, but what you get with it is this, this completeness. There's like a sense of completeness and, and, and feeling like you get everything you need to teach math. Um, I like it. I like the manipulatives. My daughter works really well. Both my daughters work really well with the manipulatives. They like the one-on-one -on -one learning with the concepts and the looping. Um, so having the manipulatives there ready to go saves me that time. Again, I'm a big, big proponent for being efficient with your time. Now, especially if you have multiple kids, you cannot spend 10 or 12 minutes a day digging up and trying to find things or running to the store, heaven forbid, um, to you know get a manipulative or something like that. Not, not what you wanna do, it's a lot of wasted time and that time adds up over you know months and years um, and you don't wanna do that. So if you wanna just have all your manipulatives ready to go, um, be able to use them throughout all the years of the curriculum that you're using, you can do it. Um, it's a lot of pieces and so I really, really recommend you to put them in these tubs. Don't do what I did the first year or two and just let them scatter to the wind. It's such a bad decision, such a bad way to go. I have really learned to become way more organized in my home school and this is a good example of doing just that. When you get a lot of stuff, um, you gotta have a place for it and this is a good one. So just a couple simple tubs and I'll go ahead and link um, the, DV, uh, the hard drive storage here for that I use for all the little pieces and all the individual things um, that really helps to store those and have the bigger things in just a simple sterilite tub. Um, it's super easy for me to do. I just stack it in the in the closet and just pull out what I need. So get to doing math you people. <laughs> Hopefully this helps you right start math. Hopefully it makes helps you make the right decision. If you have a chance hit the subscribe button down below and like the video.